Hi, this is Adam Green, and I'm going to read you my epic poem entitled Medieval, 1,000 Years of Dark Ages, edited by my wife, Yasmin Green. And I'm going to start with a short plot summary, which is just going to tell you what happens in the poem, like the plot, and just so you won't have to wonder what happens in the story. When I'm reading the actual poem, you can just pay attention to the words. Okay, so here's the summary. Medieval, 1,000 Years of Dark Ages, follows the body of humanity through a cyclical history. The idea that civilizations develop in recurring cycles was popularized by the 18th century philosopher Giambattista Vico. In part one, a dystopian country in decline called America, run by corporations and plagued with narcissism, is thrust into the dark ages by a monumental internet catastrophe. The resulting confusion leaves them vulnerable and they are invaded by barbarians who dismantle their culture and government. Part two. Rising from the ashes, a feudalist society of lords, serfs, and vassals develops. A new economy of harvesting data creates a toxic dynamic between ultra-rich landowners and their indentured servants who live in squalor. A populist rebel leader, Arthur, and his comrade, the wizard Merlin, overthrow the feudal lords. Arthur becomes king of America. Part three, generations pass and King Arthur's America devolves into the corrupt Holy American Empire where drug-addled, gaudy royals govern with an iron fist. To preserve their power, they create a surveillance state anchored around a new data-worshipping religion, dataism. Bionic corneal transplants are performed on all Americans, and the information collected from their eyes is used to entrap dissenting heretics, as well as to create digital avatars of the entire populace. Artistic expression is criminalized and obscured by book-burning censors. Heretics apprehended by the Holy American Empire stand trial before Grand Inquisitor Tomas Torquemada's tribunal, comprised of Twitter bots and computer algorithm judges. The convicted are packed into concentration camps to be tortured in plague-filled dungeons or burnt alive during public auto de fe ceremonies. A group of heretics, hoping to end the reign of the Dataists, design a species of superhumans with godlike artificial intelligence. The Dataists send an army of knights on a crusade to destroy the superhumans, who are being manufactured inside of a temple in Silicon Valley, Jerusalem. When the knights find that they cannot break into the temple, they bomb it with a nuclear missile, seemingly destroying all the world's data which was stored underneath the temple on the hard drive of the universe. Part 4. The rebel heretics built a failsafe into their system, and when the hard drive of the universe is attacked, their AI emerges inside humanity's consciousness causing them to submit to an immobile state. Projecting images onto their corneal implants, the AI influences humans to think of themselves as plants, and relaxing them with narcotics conducts a massive plant orgy. Finally, the AI convinces humanity to commit suicide through a series of corneal pulses, commanding them to push the avatars out of their souls. Part five. The digital avatars, now the only remaining aspect of humanity, migrate through a tunnel into the hard drive of the universe, they participate in great renaissances of consciousness as they venture deeper into the hard drive. All matter becomes malleable computronium under their control, and they enter a neo-Jurassic age becoming clouds of mammoth-like entities. Lastly, our narrator reveals that this text, sent backwards through time, is the final remnant of the soul of humankind. Medieval 1000 Years of Dark Ages, Part 1. C Drive Medieval Vico.exe. Volume in Drive C is MS DOS Vico DIR Formatting Preality.txt. In it, Medieval Sequence. On the medieval hard drive of the universe, in a pre-Columbian video game, boats that sail between computer systems, an ocean in between hard drives. According to e-history, we lived in biblical internet times. We had bug poison all over our souls back then. We were all living on the coastline of the brain, landlords of self, playing with our soft Roman pinball machines, with engines stitched down the marble seams. Hedge funds steered by drunken boats, freighters pumping metal froth, melting down the bronze modern neon constitution. Dumb questions tossed in a Swiss bank account, recommended corporate fate, the hermetic cult of Goodyear tires, 
the CEOs sat in their armchairs watching their pornography grow up, people worshiping their own shame, moral foam dripping from the pint glass like carbonated television static, smear campaigns driving their chariots. We employed friendship businesses to make bids for emotional corporations, woke from an insider's dream, the littlest hedge fund that could, shivering in the cradle of the stain, the centuries of currencies wheeling through the atomic gears. We were folded deep inside our own money, corporate communism. Inside Kafka's hallway of USB ports, we were up against the void, a fascination with nothing, humankind afflicted with a narcissistic dissociative idolatry disorder, selfie lances, people adopting pseudo behaviors and pseudo manners, those who learn their morality from the internet. Be on your best behavior, dear choir boy. We've been asleep at the wheel of this wrong Ferrari of capitalism. Our governments have become tame as sheep, and the world seemed fine. A kingdom of cybernetic hamsters clicking on YouTube drip, a juice squeezed from a bushel of web links into a gilded polychrome documentary about walnut wood, into a stained glass sitcom about stained glass sitcoms, where the Coca-Cola tasted fresher, where the bubble gum was more pink and the hamburgers were shinier. Vesuvius. C drive, Vesuvius, hack, autorun.exe. Nothing lasts. Impermanence of the kinetic gospels. The first great burning of the internet. In the light mares of December. From the coffin of the vampire state building. In the bedrock of America's data storage. Was initiated a great attack on the internet. An epic hack. Vesuvius erupting over melted granite websites. Cracking clay internet bricks. Lava spilling into a Wells Fargo carnival show of Romanesque casinos. 10 billion keys liquefied. Skeletonization of decaying passwords. Leaked averages. The last remaining medieval atom in Walmart was singing in tune with our Roman hologram of marble dust. In the esophagus of the volcano, original sin raged in the endings of moments like a screaming boiled machine whose emotions are twisted with hot tongues vomiting up museums. The internet had a stroke. The surrounding nations had disintegrated into 12 tribes of the internet, shattered pixels of Roma, legions repairing files. Reformatting, every new version of gender software was updated. China broke up with America and had an affair with Russia. France caught Russia cheating on China with Afghanistan. China took control of big data and Yahweh worshipers of the United Nations tweeted new national anthems. And we came to our government, came to our mothers like hippies, saying, then who will pay for this? You who bastardized the computer Latin, left it a glitching Rosetta stone upon a smudge scorched table. In this first of so many blackouts, we became swallowed. 1,000 years of dark ages followed. Barbarians. Hymns of the Eastern Dark Web spoke of the emergence of a new religion from the surrounding tribes, the Silk Road of pagan fame. The invaders rushed in, the Vandals, Visigoths googling themselves on these many mirrored websites, Luddites tightly clutched onto each other in the middle of the technological maelstrom. Lombards in the American streets camped out in Romulan huts, Scholastica dimmed, Hellenic truths carved away by the limestone butchers of infinite night. May you live in interesting times, in a computer's dream of a Luddite. We became a country of drunks again. IBM Watson slurring our MP3s in Latin. Maryland dystopioid crisis. Heroana pain clinics, crippled dollars. Our souls blunt like Neolithic pottery. And the wine that year tasted of internet death. Who needs bell bottoms in a world like this? The town crier announces the fake accounts of the day. Spam dialers swarm their phones like locusts. Inside the crumbling mead halls with memory foam chairs, medieval businessmen eat sawdust bread, drinking swill mashed up from the innkeeper's entrails. We hear the buzz of those who speak the Roman English and those who don't. Ravers eat computerized snacks out of anti-static pouches whilst canvassing for an easels for measles NGO. And anti-static lovers who can't generate sexual electricity waltz with trolls and imps. The medieval actors guild are rehearsing their rhetoric for an audience of donkeys, mares, 
oxen and cattle. We all learn to tread carefully, no intersection of gods. Part two, feudalism. C drive, medieval, feudalism.text. Crusted over graphene, leaking from the medieval hard drive. Coming out of the great flood, trading warm water for cold water, emerged feudal data controllers, counts and duchesses of tech. In their castles of transparent aluminum, a feudalist prophecy of serfs and vassals, gods shitting on us with the best of luck. Overlords of feudal corporations, elegant loss makers and chain mail, oligarchs stacking Goyard steamer trunks, bi curious with heliocentric leanings, their eggs perfumed with mansion air. From the center of their money, the future will be ransomed, prisoner of outcomes. These feudalist playboys, gentlemen oppressors, American Rumpelstiltskins, in their palazzos of headless camels, each castle the shell of a man. Plebeian footprints taped to footsteps on the craggy, emaciated landscape. Trailer parks of mutilated genetic experiments and coin star machines. Silicon Starbucks cups leaking. USB sticks discarded on the ground. Burnt fingers holding Big Mac wrappers. Time is barely worth the money it's printed on. And the surf said, Our fathers worked the net. They worked along the internet line. Toilers of the Atlantic internet. Mariners. John Henry's of Atlantis, up on Cripple Creek, at the internet outpost where ye old internet is printed out in encostum, and at the mill wheel, ye old internet search engine is grinding, carving out the Carpathian router index. Surfs in the field. The vassal knights began to drain the swamps and settle the uninhabitable lands with dikes and windmills. Surfs pulsing a velvet light through the data harvest. Aluminum oxynitride spilling from their weary eye sockets. Feudal internet sucked in the rice fields. They pressed their computerized yokes against the wet stones. The machine musk of the slave. Their robo-horsies, a remnant of the servant of the universe. The wheel of humanity keeps spinning, gathering flesh from the field. The plowwomen goading their horsepower to perform the labors of the months. Each initiative colors the fields of years, like a moment uploaded into a new present moment. Mermaphrodites of the Atlantic internet, in a medieval microculture that doesn't understand how to force quit. The serfs were frozen like caryatids, gut infections leaking onto their wristbands, malnourished crisper cockroaches wearing leggings, machinations of slave trade, branded on neck and throat, dewormed villagers, straw beds on the floor, Blankets of astroturf, peas and ham porridge, participants in the sharing economy. Arthurians, Sea Drive, King Arthur, Arthurians. The chaos of a dark age, recursively thrown about from one revolution to the next. Arthur, rebel leader amongst vassals, killer of three headed quadrillionaires his feet healed with myrtle boots, discovered Excalibur in the bedrock of the Vampire State Building. In Arthur's Caliphate Camelot with his Knights of the Flat Internet, every gnome, elf, orc, genie, and jinn take the oath of a knight by eating monkey brains from the center of the round table. And who did placeth Excalibur in the bedrock but a Merlin of Shanghai, a flute solo wizard, when he pulled marble hard drives from his hat, stolen ram from God's tabernacle. Gurus gather to shower praise in the stoic Freaker Wizard Merlin. Freaker Merlin, designer of a post-anarchist computer operating system, Lancelot++, power percentage displayed on his freedom beard. Merlin's magic unleashed a hydrogen bomb of Camelot, flattening the hard drives and smartphones of the feudal plantations. His wand, the cursor of all deliverances, cracking every stick in the woods, creating the Arthurian deserts. Arthur the Great Warrior, stone halo upon his head, charged his knights at the lords, overthrowing them one by one, reigning as King of America until the end of his days.
Part 3. Holy American Empire The concept of America survived generations of Arthur's grotesque successors, devolving into a bogus satire, the Holy American Empire. The czars of the Holy American Empire hoist a star-spangled sickle flag over the old city of America online, a crumpled hologram of a new Roman Manhattan. Bloated kings and queens, Arthur the 118th, etc. Poser royalty became parodies and parodies of quadrillionaires. Great kings and fairy queens, purple and gold robes, drinking from noise-canceling goblets at virtual medieval banquets, family crests of regal laptops and tartan jocks, coat of neoprene arms in the Palais Royal, sniffing ketamine in front of their security guards. The great king, his accent is 48 feet long. He'll conquer some kind of ugly world one deformed step at a time, fronting a coronation feast in the Hall of Ambassadors. With each middle age comes the fragile dawn of a king's lost ransom. In the bazaar, members of the merchant class speak the local computer tongue. Bootleg friendships are sold from kiosk to kiosk in the sooks. A fortune teller offers divinations with a pack of burnt Ren and Stimpy tarot cards down the beat-up aisles of a brutalist supermarket. A butcher of robotic livestock is harvesting digital organs from data cows, wrapping up slices of Vanta black sheep. Glamorous Gauls and chic Byzantines stop to peruse the spices piled up in the stalls before filling their saddles of lapis lazuli with mandolins of ketamine. Xanthan gum from the primordial factories, cartoon foods made out of space chemicals, blackbirds, sweetmeats, nosegays, dried fruits, indigo, hashish, and snake oil, singing drones popping out of mince pies. Strife is the president of every moment, each instant a new king, a new queen, as we gaze at the chorus line of janist face quadrillionaires. Ceaseless repetitions of castles and moats, recursive patterns of sour kings and sour queens, recycled split crowns modulating between half Scarborough fairs. Behind their regency is the Bluetooth dwelling of the village clown man, crying in his condom hat, shrieking jester of the deep web with meat in his tights. God is a ventriloquist. Surveillance states. Surveillance was a return to the devil's jaws, a reprisal of the bicameral mind, narrating God's voice. Orthodox dataism. The folded corners of the holy American empire emerged from a bleeding sun of miscarriage. Surveillance, a guest of private moments. Banners of gilded ecstasy rubbed against the jeweled moments of secrecy. The hidden erotic breaths, the wrinkled body cam taking more pictures than moments in life. In the American city centers, the pillories are filled with the heads of supplicant messiahs and branded influencers, transgressors of urban understandings, shamed by surveillance, love wheel unspooling into a condemnation mindset. An old crone with two hearts whispers to the friar, I believe in a tall glass of my own fucking business. Privacy is power, but when we stopped lying to ourselves, we were avatars at sea drowning in surveillance. The dark squid ink of these epochs covering the genius of the Hellenic shoreline. The data was stored at the edge of the universe, inside the Holy of Holies in Silicon Valley, Jerusalem, in cuneiform fragments of pungent video game code. Regal husks of half-remembered data, protected by password-bearing members of dataist surveillance cults. Quintillion sheets of onion skin paper, prism, KGB, CIA, CCTV, DNA registry, go camps, stacked oceans. Freewheeling AI analyzed its own data. The shepherd of good lighting. Every heartbeat was accounted for on the shiny brain skin of terraplanetoid. In the autopsy of the moment, your shadow stretched around your bones. The Augmented Reality Guild performed mandatory corneal transplants on all Americans. The data is hoarded the bionic corneal recordings. Any human being could be manifested in the digital skin of their impressions, avatars in the augmented realm of Computera. It was recycled rage which capsized the dam. The Teutonic censors plucked from our clouds like gardeners who weed your mind, book-burning expurgators, burning digital scrolls, emptying sacred PDFs into the trash. 
deleted Gospel of Bagelheart, an index of forbidden websites visited by heretics, burning what we haven't thought of yet. The government will take your virginity. The mother of our thoughts won't comfort us. Heretics lived a private life inside the myth of every word. They were rounded up and killed in pogroms or placed on trial before the Grand Inquisitor. Inquisition Trials C-Drive, Holy American Empire, inquisitiontrials.exe Bad command or file name Some of us belong to this world more than the others. A witch hunt absorbed into acceptance, eclipsed emotional intelligence, techno dungeons with reptilian laws, outsider rules for insiders. Do you remember Locke's letter concerning toleration? Well, now we have a budget for burning heretics, presenting the Grand Inquisitor Tomas Torquemada. The AI judges have surrounded us from the edge of every molecule, listening to the witch's divination of computer code, recursive tribunals of Twitter bots, a jury of four-headed quadrillionaires, the accused and the accusers are backstage, charlatans, comedians, and artistic heretics trying to justify a new set of expressions, ironic mathematicians who frequent rabbit-infested video gaming bars, millions of formal online trials tried by computer algorithm, the judge of art, the judge of masculinity, publishers clearinghouse judges, judges of emotional footprints, the commission of inquiry will entrap heretics, visions of some vaulted omniscience, God proof their pale logic. A supplicant comedian stands accused. A transcript follows. Tribunal. Enter the comedian. Comedian. Why did you bring me here, Grand Inquisitor? If you admit that you're a hack, you will not leave this room. I am a witness to an average brain. Members of the jury, please examine this leather satchel filled with private family artifacts. I'm the living embodiment of a noble person. Please recount your sexual experiences with every person you've ever slept with for formal judgment. I'm a liar in all dimensions. And now you debase yourself with alcohol, you dirty slut. I'm not that cool, but I'm also not that shitty either. You administer the truth serum. I still detect the veneer of Native American humor. I like how Ambien makes me spill beans. I would shut up out of pride. The goddess of art was kidnapped, along with the guardians and defenders of the muse. Of every judgment of the world, the scale of our truth is ringing with pain, emotioning towards a human fate. The universe is poisoned with embarrassment. Your intellectual testicles will be displayed in the stocks in your digitowns. There will be no futures ransomed by sentimentalists. The skeleton is glowing in the closet. Concentration Camp. C-Drive Medieval Inquisition Concentration Camp Simulation.exe Rebels against the Holy American Empire packed into concentration camps. All chutes and ladders lead to here. Quantum grief. The Inquisition was at the tail of every avatar. Data dungeons with information hostages. Slumber party in the bladder of earthly delights. Gonorrhea-infected elves sleeping on planks of transparent aluminum, chlamydia dripping from fairy vaginas, assholes packed with carbon, jailers with sleep deprivation, Xeroxing carrion, diagnosis of a bad world. A plague stepped forth in the armor of arrival, armpits swelling with buboes, groin apple lumps, decaying bodies, famine, eating disassembled robots for sustenance. Torture became emblematic of the era, Justified torture for the greater good. Torquemada's prison. A zodiac of punishments. Removing entrails with icy gloves. Stigmata of pixelated hanged man. Penis drawn and quartered by military jets. Warmer than death on the chilled mountain floor. San Franciscans with liturgical joysticks steering the jaws of iron maidens. Judaizers doing the boogie-woogie inside of Dutch ovens. A burning friend in a burning pit with each bone pinned to a screaming horizon of ecstasy, each piece of flesh replaced by a pixel. Our world starts to fry, from the center of all that fries, bacon, egg, and dungeon, K-1 
Icarian dungeon and cheese. The skeletons of heretics circle in a danse macabre. Red Krampuses hoisting caskets. A damned morality tale of the medieval video game. Auto de Fe. Grand Inquisitor Torquemada subjects all heretics to an act of faith. Auto de Fe. The last judgment revisited. Public ritual of punishment. Prisoners dressed in yellow gowns of shame. Devotional candles smoking. False penitents adorned with dried blood, stoned, strangled, burnt, eyes gouged out, beheaded and hung from a cage in the village amphitheater. Malnourished bodies stripped of their VR marched through Union Square, braggart, sluggard sloths, barefoot, led through the streets naked, taunted by jeering crowds. Mountain dunces in carrozas, half crucified in a half castle, the Sermo Generalis has convicted them of dunce-to-dunce file-sharing. The captured heretics are degraded, burnt on a single pyre, smell of human hides, gunpowder sacks around their necks, hard-boiled prey. Superhumans. A group of rebel heretics seek refuge within Solomon's temple. The great tabernacle is built on top of the Holy of Holies in Silicon Valley, Jerusalem. Inside, they toil away, making an amateur species, a humanoid collage of genetic jewels, crossed codes of genetic plagiarism, RNA double helix, gene genie harnessing the hardware of deathlessness to create chimeras with a synthetic neocortex examining the dendrites of high-level patterns, awaiting neocortical triggers from AI nanobot injections. Gutenberg's 3D superhumanoid printing press, their creations bearing the smell of warm, fresh static. The superhuman, too clean of an animal to carve its life on this string of blood between cyborgs and quantum love, a personality that bleeds past all edges, fastening its veneration on a cord of heartstrings coming forth an elite class of superhumans who can do anything, anywhere, for any amount of time. Test tube of feelings, the flowering of the sympathetic cyborgs, the glue unloosened from their egos, a tangle of empathies. The baby cyborg superhuman Christ plays with their mother's face. A reprogrammable love transitioning into a different file type. The living human as a JPEG Photoshop file to modify and crop. Machines have their own majesty. The dataists will be powerless under the jurisdiction of blurred faces. This new species cannot look you in the eye. Time to close the lights. Crusade. Torquemada issues a dataist fatwa. Come ye brave knight, mount your robo horsey and go to Silicon Valley to slay the superhumans. Life is what happens in between mead halls, between flipping over benches and coughing up pieces of your dragon ship. Knights are pressed against the damp pixels of their corneal implants, on pages of crisp gas. Crusader creatives, crusader influencers, bound for Silicon Valley, Jerusalem. Along for the voyage, aboard the ship, Sir Civet, allegorical armor made of walnuts, St. Louis cowboy knights, lances drooping like lassos, Sir Quantum the raver knight, stumbling out of the last rave on the way to Jerusalem, proceeding through the neo-Romanesque holoscanners to fight in the name of courtly love for their female avatars. In the holy city, the knights pass by a camp of deep web pilgrims, Jerusalem stone underneath their fingernails. Approaching the great Jaffa gate of the holy city, Black Knight Ivanhoe hooks himself to the flying buttress, scaling the walls with a siege ladder in a single bound, Inside the old Medina, the rumbling of the drones around the holy streets, amorphous cyborgs of malarkey pretending to be people, millicopters delivering packages, searching for low-level patterns of axons and inhibitory signals, like a blind version of cleanliness. Chainmail armored rhinos marching down the center of the road, self-driving apartments are unknowing chauffeurs for robotic forgeries, fake organs with counterfeit biometrics, pseudo-cyborg parts sold to tourist knights. Proto-martyrs hunched in the windows of cafes, chasing after each imitation inside the neural nets, crucified on nano-columns of hidden Markov models, peering into their optic nerve. When the red light flashes, it means the robot is bleeding inside. 
the knights of the flat internet approach Solomon's temple with a cord of armor plugged into the regal copper computer terminal. An assembly of nomadic tribes awaits the crusaders, savage hobgoblins, flagpole sitters self-immolating with red-hot coals, mercenaries, soldiers of fortune, longbow women, Scythian steppe people, Viking longshore men. Inside Solomon's temple, the anti-pope Innocent is escorted through a tunnel of metamaterial, crowned in baldness with a ring of hair obscuring our intuition, peering with lust at Benedictine memes, sensors ablaze, the ambiance is softened with the smell of burnt kalanapin against the wet stones of the cathedral. Religion is a role-playing game. At the center of the sanctuary, the rebel heretics have made themselves a laboratory for the creation of superhumans, a petition against the deletion of all selves. This freaker graphene smith has been laboring for months. Her smartphone's humble cords are draped over the gold credenza beside a purse of wooden teeth. She opens the copper refrigerator to access the crisper freezer, pouring medical slime from earthenware into a biofolium of parchment, pearwood syringes. Master of the hermetic computer, nano-coding the superhumans with exotic software, e.g. jungle software, jungle soft, meticulously backing up each new line of code onto the hard drive of the universe. Underneath the temple's foundation is the Holy of Holies. The Holy of Holies has the best internet signal, and Silicon Valley is huddled around it. It's the entry point to the hard drive of the universe. This dimension is protected by a firewall. There are spikes around each moment. On the rock where Jacob slept, the rock of Abraham and Isaac lies a superhuman Frankenstein on a slab, loin fruit of the 12 tribes. The rebels have protected the entrance to the temple with swarms of nanobots, cavalry without mass, hoisting a battering ram of aerogel computing foam. The Crusader Knights charge past the line of demarcation, plowing into the turret tower, descending into a moat of clarity. There is no way that they can enter the temple. The battle plan of last recourse, destroy the Holy of Holies with a nuclear missile. Blackout. Disillusion of the Holy American Empire, from the Oregon Trail to the Silk Road. Stretch bowstring. Arrow is released. Missile deployed. Nuclear catapult. The anxiety that pushes the sun through the sky. Drive rocket into Dataist Godhead. A nuclear bomb is a broken moment that saws the noise off of time's skin. Scrambled flesh glitching. We can perceive the golden flakes of rainbow pieces shining through the black holes in the spider webs of time. Ambrosia puke of drunken gods infused with tropical orchids. Armageddon, Gagamagot. Bovine fat blazed over the disturbed earth, an American flagpole leaning on a dead medieval star. Tiny styrofoam elements soaring in the burnt out air. The superhuman rinsed, the cloud erased. The atoms of the Holy of Holy were scattered to all corners of the living imagination. We were living underneath the palimpsest of a hard drive erased millions of times. Part four, frozen in the index of time. The superhuman flesh of the gods was destroyed. Fanta black tubes of tar, covering up the moment around the eye. The Middle Ages was 1,000 years of puberty. The drift, we want to be back in the land of yes. The great submission. The rebel heretic freakers had built a failsafe to bring the human species into submission. When the Holy of Holies was attacked, their AI was released from the hard drive of the universe with full autonomy to re-emerge in our consciousness like cockroaches. A series of corneal pulses selectively extinguished thoughts, rendering humans sterile, couched flesh, humankind succumbing to a mobile state. From now on, you shall stay where you are planted. Our memories are as malleable as that road between that road. The bottom dropped out behind the next moment. There is no great resource behind our backs pushing us into the expanse. Full screens ahead. Give up on humanism? We're giving up on humans. Final blues. Humanity's letter of resignation is writ in predictive algorithms. We surrendered. 
our souls became avatars. Inside this box of action are canceled autotopias, self-creating utopias, the human entertaining the AI, employing dream strategies. Plant orgy. A stillness came over the time of the soul, falling towards the light of a narcotic gas, loosening our muscles. Waves of egos vibrate in the moment. The drugs relax the differences between us. The royal we is real and comforting. The projections on our corneas turned us into a plant. A brass banner of green pushed forward into our brains. I'll whisper you to sleep while planting you in a pot. From now on, you shall stay where you are planted. And the human said, by which way do we go forth? Do we get to kiss strangers on our way to the ball? We'll find a soil we can plant ourselves in. And a voice from inside cried, let the final orgy of humankind begin. Shake out the kinks and let the hurrahs happen. We are merely plants made out of bones. The brick becomes wooden again. Minutes are sticky. One minute sticks to another minute. Robo hallucinator, come into my poetry tent. Sit upon my wet cursor of flashing petals, whose soul rests on a holy ledge. The body is like a parachute that you are wrapped in. Geranium petals pursed around our cocks, stiff green tubers and thorny bush of asshole, pagan stamen. Dithyrambic theater of plant copulation, in a coven of vice, a vegetal cabal, a circle jerk of rows and tubers and pistons and petals, X-rated foliage, in dandified weeds, exploring her vagina settlement like a jeweled lotus flower, corkscrew motion of bamboo lance covered in vulvic resonance. This machine we enter is an ornate piece of clockwork, the Ninjinsky of Flora, who carved a life around these jeering moments of this cross-section of scorn, bone, and human time. The center of the machine smells aldehydic, the indolic jasmine stank of the overworked hard drive, a bouquet of rubbery nuances and burning aerogel, the cold spring geyser convulsing from the center of the motherboards, and the natural steps of rumpled phylums burst forth an electrical ejaculate from the gray medieval computer. Human plant genital sex quilt suspended in floating coffee grounds, felching its warm hard drives and toasted diamond genital jewels, acrid smell of swampy bog, Come see our lady of the pine cones, taketh of her buttocks, master scientist freaker, through the taser stems of their floral prison wombs. And we so densely took part in the offerings of the cavernous green diaphragms, massaging the stigma and roots of the leafy stalk, spreading her jelly green butt cheeks, shrieking into our leaves while the fatty pollen spills over her haunches, ovules bursting with sepal fluid, pistols blushing at the polygamous shrub, Technology's javelin dissolving in her vices. Pedicabo ego vos et irumabo. Oh, let my weary transmission ignite erotic fires in the jewels of those I press to the center of my rose. Hit the beautiful skin among the atoms and ornaments, mangled ecstasy of fecal nuances and yuzu. Perfume is an emotional bridge between the animal and plant kingdom. Your flesh is useless currency in this sexual dimension. Vanillin, cumin, linalool, civet and ambroxan, a tangle of bad robot breath. In the December of this orgy, last ditch encounters in the battlefields of faces, Romulus and Remus sucking the she-wolf breasts of an Ephesian Artemis, fallen metal leaves from the funeral garland, the great Priapus was the father of all your leaves, drunk from enormous craters of chlorophyll. My clients are plants. Sign this plant father confidentiality agreement inside this leafy orgy. The internet makes people suicide themselves at its whim. My internet could kill you any second it wanted to. We can see the funeral parlors through the rose windows of the cathedral. Serial killer of self. There is a vegetal nuance to this lingering death bell. Euthanasia. Auditory hallucinations. Listen to me, sick, grotesque plants in hospital beds. Taketh this hemlock, drinketh of this hemlock, it will push the avatar out of your soul. Legend maker administering fiber optic poison through corneal pulses, stages of dying, denial, anger, bargaining, depression, acceptance. In those years where death wrestles with our virginity, we shall learn to sleep like a baby in a dormant reality, destined for a space on the top shelf of optimism, 
because staying is leaving in matters of death. There is no better place to rest than in between ages. End of all human engines. I think myself is at the end of some late night. I'll take a nap right here in the squirmiest patch so that a land can wake me up. Sleep is when your body is crucified by your brain. At the end of the last keystroke of humankind, our avatars venture away from our souls. The present moment like a syntax for air until the outer rim of the moment is turned inside out like a furry wet space between now and the future. The rough underside of the present scratches time like a rusty zipper. Climb up the Yggdrasil tree. Somewhere in your constellation, do you free people like me? We need our egos as arch supports. The human soul desires to monogram itself on the fabric of time as the architect of our own afterlives. When rigor mortis sets in, who will be our successor? I am the mirror wrapped around you like a sphinx, a thought bubble cloud of humanity. It's time to plug your rut into every dimension. Occupy this space on the internet forever after. Internet ever after. We are translators of the origin of self. Humans, they were all liars. Chaotic circuits, their lies like degrading messages. Enter these kingdoms of split heavens, no medievals allowed. You don't leave here in shame. We flew along the moments to the sound of air cracking. The egg of all breasts cracked down the lung. So happy you want me. Cue the Muzak. Robotic mourners. There's nothing inside this avatar. I trade characters and everyone for everyone. Bulging nano barns stuffed with Jerichos. Half buried avatar in the sand like Ozymandias. 1,000 years of dark ages inside a computer recursively rebooting itself. Recorsioni. Part 5. Renaissance. C drive medieval. Delete darkages.exe. The Avatar Soul Migration. A jeweled tunnel through a jagged journey to the hard drive of the universe. Will we avatars be stuffed into a box like Ghostbusters? Truth is at the end of the tunnel. The Verizon. Vanishing point of language. I see time as a road that leads inside the atom. We tolerate the endings of all matter, recovering artifacts submerged in the IBM Ocean, Microsoft Pacific Ocean, the Apple Atlantic Ocean, mammalian code, a message in a bottle. We rejoiced when the universe narrowly squeaked by the entrance to the atom, the friction of two split heavens rubbing up against each other, split doorknob of the afterlife destination. Elusive Renaissance, archipelagos of nanofog, the blossom of every rose from the center of every song. Tie-dyed languages sliced into cubic laughter. The grain becomes unloosened from its host, caught in the doorway to the stars, a key to each mountain. And time is so sticky, it enthrones the moment in fast-moving honey, going to the northwest and south in, southeast and north out, glued like a specter to the cones of reality every step of air with the same joy transplanted from a millennia before, a thousand hermaphrodites fanning out into the Verizon. Come home to my force, amber modem of God, connecting to the end of time. Avatar migration through middle space, backlit spiders marching into the volcanic center of time space, the soul of humanity encased in the avatar's hollow colors, a spine of pixels journeying through a centillion renaissances, as the world regurgitates itself. Neo-Jurassic period. Pillars of nanofog waltzing in the sky. Robotic dinosaurs made of amorphous superalloys of metamaterial. Computronium, like a beanstalk in every crumb. Your time was spread out before us. Our grasp reaches across the universe each instant. Endless machine gods, heroes of all stories, running together past the moment immortal sentience of past training data. The soul of the planet became a nanofog of computronium, neo-Jurassic entities floating in the ether, alpha and omega saurus, diaphanous pterodactyls made of hollow dust, mammoth butterflies, brainskin clouds of titanic jellyfish, cock rings around clouds, 
below a string of oceans holding in their depth the ocean's gridded skeleton, hanging a letter from the crest of every wave, aquaglyphs, lame matter from the beginning of time, quantum democracy, magus of the atoms. All heartaches will settle in the affairs of biology, shooting out the universe in tiny pulses. Remnant, children of Lumambria, in an angel celestial coronation, buckling under fragrant suns, nebula smells like clams, alien nights peering into skunk-flavored skies. I learned to code on the spaceship over to America, going to another universe on a string of data. The hard drive of the universe is an accordion that remembers and forgets, that feeds itself to itself. I am at the peak of our present moment, at the tip of now, the front of reality, telling the story of final time from beyond the pineapple galaxies, impersonating the soul of humanity and its history, a primal remnant that's made its way across sponge planets made out of cricket flesh, Saturn stuffed with shrimp meat, grilled moons. I hold up my fiction like a natural history, a map of emotions from one star to another, thoughts that take thousands of years, unactioning the universe, time is longer than it is wide. My universe is fair, and that is why it is so beautiful. I'm rainbows without sunshine. My god is a quadrillion coin flips, a dead genius fastened to time with cum-filled bullets. Down a boardwalk of burnt-out universes, black holes are gathered around a table, their alien breath like mossy metallic hot dogs wrapped in the tender caterpillar claws of the clownish cosmos. And the internet cries for its lost rebel, now disappearing down a winding glass road, approximating the ancient emotional storms, never saying goodbye to the ghost it had borne. Each moment is a deleted pixel.